Hi guys, Hatch Kramicki again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. The World Championship is a couple of weeks away. The Esports World Cup arrives a few weekends after that. And rumour has it, Rostermania is going down before the World Championship, especially for the teams that aren't even going to be going to champs. They will be making changes, it seems, Minnesota Rocket, especially before the Esports World Cup occurs. And potentially, if they get slammed there as well, they might make moves again. Lots to talk about today. Very much on Twitter, your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. First of all, let's Let's talk about the Esports World Cup because it's getting underway already, right? The Call of Duty Warzone stuff is happening basically as of today over the next couple of days. Then there's week two, week three, week four, whatever. And then the actual Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 tournament is going to be run, I think, on week seven, which is basically the middle of next month. But um, yeah, so all the boys are out there, at least the Warzone players are out there. Aiden and all those guys are on their way. Whoever they're representing, of course, Team Falcons put together a pretty competitive squad as well on paper. Obviously, you know, his pocket on the way, right? doing the hosting. I think he's actually going to be interviewing, isn't he? Yeah, here we go. Puckett interviewing. These are the other guys that are getting involved. Many, of course, pretty much all of them. For the Call of Duty Space Shifters, their Enigmas, their Infinities there. We've seen many of these others before as well. I think last year, sometime Reflections stepped in on the CDL broadcast for Puckett when he was away for some time. But um, look, the Esports World Cup is underway. We know that some of the CDL teams are going to go. The rumour has it, although it's not been officially confirmed, I don't think, that every single CDL team has been invited to attend. There's 16 teams that are going to be at the Esports World Cup event in a few weeks time. One champion. The total prize pool I think is $1.8 million, just shy of what the actual Call of Duty World Championship will be in a couple of weekends time in Dallas. Now Ravens have confirmed they're going to be there. FaZe have confirmed they're going to be there. Like we've seen obviously G2 and stuff, they're going to be there. So um, definitely the organisations that are partnered and are part of a organisation or a club that's been invited, they will go. Like subliners will go because they're now effectively cloud nine the organizations that are not that's a bit more of a question ravens you know they will be there and well felony says esports world cup looks unreal the question is i guess for ravens will they be there with the same team because carolina confirms that their team will be the same. I guess we can actually just quickly have a look at this, right? They did tweet a few days ago when they were going to be there, of course. Unfortunately, they fell short of the tournament in terms of qualifying for challenge, but they tweeted this out. Clay Fellow, Gwyn TJ, Brian Saint, the coach, we're going to be there at the Esports World Cup. Now, whether they have the same team is a matter for debate. There was a rumour a few weeks ago that there was a deadline, a roster deadline on the 27th of June, by which time you had to have your full roster submitted for the Esports World Cup, and that was going to be the roster you had to play with. That was the day, of course, that Major 4 started. So the theory goes that, well, whatever your roster is for Major 4 and therefore also the World Championship, if you qualify, that's got to be your roster for the Esports World Cup. But it doesn't necessarily seem like that is the case. My understanding now is that that June 27th deadline was actually for the teams to tell the Esports World Cup whether they were going to attend or not. So I believe all of the CDL teams will have given a response one way or the other. They may not have confirmed that yet. Like Optic, for example, haven't said anything whether they're going to be there or not. Now, they haven't been invited as Opta Gaming, right? Because they don't, they're not represented in enough esports to be there as Opta Gaming across all the different weeks. So Optic didn't get invited for everything, but Optic Texas got invited to attend and, um, you know, to, I guess, play as Optic Texas at the tournament as like a guest invite, basically, for the CDL teams that are rather good. So we don't really know which teams have said yes or no, but we're pretty sure they've said something because the Esports World Cup need time if teams are going to deny the, the invite to sign, you know, to ensure that other players get to go or to figure out exactly how the open qualifier system is going to work for the tournament in several weeks' time. So, few things to figure out. But um, my understanding is that that was what the deadline was potentially for. And actually, the roster deadline is rather later, i.e. teams can make changes for the tournament in a few weeks' time before they go. So, you know, I'm licking my lips at the prospect of this because this doesn't just mean one roster made. Yeah, this means potentially two champs ends and even before champs as we're going to discuss today teams are considering moves and then if you get slammed real bad at the world cup then obviously your team probably ain't all that so you might have to blow it up again which is uh, definitely what i'll be looking forward to but anyway that was kind of like the opening ceremony obviously people were talking about this right for the world cup saying it was soulless or whatever and reminded people 
of like Qatar World Cup, let's say 2022 or whatever you want to put it as. But I'm like, at the end of the day, they put on a show and uh, the Esports World Cup is not going away. This is just year one. My question, I guess, over the coming years is something to do with how the Esports World Cup is going to play a part in the regular CDL season because actually the way that it is this year, I'm pretty happy with. Have the regular Call of Duty World Championship but then a couple of weeks after, basically like a month after, have the Esports World Cup, a big event going on there to then, you know, doesn't quite count the same as champs. It will probably be considered in hindsight as, you know, not exactly like an X Games but not, you know, historically as important as the Call of Duty World Championship but the Esports World Cup victory will definitely carry some serious weight and I kind of like the way that works. The question is, right, is that probably what the Esports World Cup are looking to do in the future is to have the World Championship be at the Esports World Cup. So rather than champs and the World Cup, basically champs will be hosted at the World Cup type thing. Whether that will actually happen, I don't know. As I say, I don't want it to happen just because, you know, two events is better than one and also it opens the door to this like double roster change period type thing. But it's pretty cool what they're doing for the trophy, by the way. So if you win, you can actually choose three keys. So each of the teams that are there get like a key. You can choose three of them to like basically present having you vanquished their team. You can present their key effectively on your trophy for winning the tournament, which is um, which actually pretty damn cool, I'm not going to lie. So obviously there's been some trash talk on this and we'll discuss more of it later on today because there was certainly some drama going on there. So of course, Zinni in the replies. The reality is we don't know whether Optic are going or not. What we do know is that Scump is involved. We actually saw Scump and Optic like promote this when it was first announced you know, last year. I'm pretty sure it was sometime. But as Scump says here, hey guys, the Esports World Cup is about to start. We'll be streaming the MW3 tournament later in August. Definitely check out the opening ceremony. Hashtag Esports World Cup. So um, basically, Scump confirms that he's got co-streaming permissions for the MW3 tourney, which is actually, you know, I wasn't even sure that was going to be the case. Whether he's going to be there in Riyadh co-streaming it, that I I guess is another question. But Scump is going to be involved and therefore by some extension Optic will be involved to some degree. Would Scump be co-streaming a tournament without Optic being there as well? Like if Scump's agreed to do it, like would you not think that Optic will also probably say they want to attend and also especially because the players, let's be real, there's $1.8 million on the line, even if Hex doesn't want to agree, because there's a few complicating factors in play here. The fact that Optic weren't invited to the events, they, well, okay, Optic Gaming weren't invited. The team, we believe, has been invited. So, you know, what does that say? Do you want to say yes or no? There's some few interesting business factors on either side of it. But the reality is, there's serious money on the line. And if you want to become an organization which is going to be actually invited as Optic Gaming in future years to the World Cup, you probably need to accept this invite and that's why a lot of teams are going pretty hard on picking up rosters from various different esports to make sure they can actually attend so they play the world championship but the question is will they play the esports world cup toronto will be there that is basically confirmed because um koi were the organization that was kind of announced as a club but actually adam adamu says they are coalescing their brands under toronto ultra so this is a big question as to who they would actually represent but no the one brand that they will be going for is going to be Toronto Ultra, which is interesting for the future of uh, Ultra in general, actually, in terms of what they do as an organization, whether they kind of combine everything under that heading anyway. So all of their teams in any esports will be representing the Ultra brands, including, of course, the COD team that will be there. So yeah, I'm sure the Optic players will want to go and play. Whether they are actually going to go, we don't yet know. I don't know if they're going to do like a process episode and announce it then. They don't have to announce it, of course, and the focus for now will probably be on the actual World Champion itself. But um, to my understanding, Optic will have made a decision as to whether they are going or not by this time. But let's talk Roster Mania, right? Because Boston Breach have been invited. I think they're going to go. They've certainly implied they're going to go on their social media. They do a tweet actually here talking about how they had high expectations and uh, they got absolutely slammed. This year built character, they said, which is pretty funny, taught us valuable lessons and only reinforced our commitment to building a winning environment here in Boston. We will be back, they say. Now, they will be back with what What's team, I guess, is the question. Even Beans replies, says, learned a lot. Once again, I'd like to apologize to the fans. Not good enough. No idea what's next in my career. Hope to see everyone in Black Ops 6. So kind of confirming 
he, he doesn't know what's going on, obviously. Boston don't really know what's going on. So they will need to make a decision in the coming weeks what they're going to do, which players they're going to keep. Do they keep Beans? Do they keep Snoopy? What is the plan over there? They're going to be at the Esports World Cup, though. So they have a chance. This is the benefit, in some ways, of not being at Champs. Is Okay, it's not great to not be at Champs. You'd prefer to be there, obviously. You get one more event to see how your team does. But if you're not there, as these guys aren't, and as Minnesota Rocker are not, you get the chance to make a roster change for the Esports World Cup, we believe at least. That's certainly the rumour as of here. See how it goes at the World Cup, and if you're still terrible, then you can blow it up again. Now look, Black Ops 4, Black Ops 6, sorry, is going to be a different game to Modern Warfare 3. So um, you're building a team for next year's game, but you're still playing the World Cup with this year's game. So there's a bit of something in that, but realistically, does anyone really build a roster based on the actual nature of the new COD title? They just build what they think will be the best team in the moment for realistically any COD title. Who knows how the new game is going to play out. So this is what JKL says. My understanding currently is that Minnesota Rocker will not have the same roster for Major 4 representing them at the Esports World Cup. So Rocker, it seems, are going to be the first team to effectively blow it up, right? So this is the Minnesota Rocker team that failed to qualify for the World Championship. They were looking good at the start of the season. They came top four at Major 1 with the team with Awakening there and Vivid, of course, still on the roster. They got rid of Big Wake. They brought in Gunless. Apparently, Gunless wasn't their first choice. There was actually talk about them potentially trying to get Beans recently that we discussed the other day on the Dope Check show, that apparently that was at least in consideration. That never happens. Of course, later in the season, they even looked at bringing in Dylan Rex and like putting Vivid back in and bringing in Slasher in for accuracy. They never did that either. And look, I think Stanley's an entertaining personality, but I did not like the move when they brought him into the team, and it's been proven that it just didn't work out, did it? I mean, a 59-rated cut their stages absolutely abysmal to be honest accuracy had a 68 rated despite even stepping out of the team for some while given he was dealing with some personal stuff the search weren't even that bad Linz bounced back towards the end of the season but their respawn record i mean four and 18 is just absolutely abysmal so this team was bad someone's got to pay i mean i'm not gonna lie the people that made the decision to bring in standy yeah, I just don't get it. Like, replacing Awakening, fine, but the Stanley for Vivid thing never made sense. And I was genuinely convinced they would make this move, and then Stanley would be, like, gone before, you know, before Major 4 or something. They decided to stick it out, and, um, well, it didn't pay off, did it? So anyway, they came top 12, they're not at champs, and they're going to make a change. What change are they going to make? What do you actually do if you're a rocker? Because... Do you blow it up completely or do you, which maybe is more sensible, say, okay, you know what? For the Esports World Cup, we're going to make a couple of changes just to see how things go. Or even maybe go to the World Cup with a roster of like five or six players and then change people out mid-tournament just to see because... What's more important, doing well at the World Cup or finding an optimal roster for next season? I guess there's a matter for debate there, assuming you can bring a roster of like five or six people and then make changes mid-tournament, which I don't know if you can. So many questions to be answered. But um, yeah, rumor has it anyway, Minnesota Rocker will be blowing it up. And accuracy is cousin Acio in the reply says, interesting, so yeah, maybe he's heard a thing or two. What would you guys do if you were the general management for the Minnesota Rocker and you've still got your job? Because you might not have after making these decisions this season but assuming you do what is the plan do you drop lins right <laughs> like and make another i don't know like as far as i'm concerned if you're keeping Linz, I would want to do kind of what happened with Abuza on Surge and trying to make him comfortable, right? They brought in Brezzy, made Abuza more comfortable. The team got better. Linz and maybe someone like Cobra could be a good option. The other member of that Awobobos team, certainly worth looking at, I would say. Does Lamar stay? Do you say, look, accuracy, please just coach us? Like, that could work as well. Because realistically, I think you can only have one of Gunless or Accuracy, and you can only have one of Linz and Standy. So I think you've got to make a two-man move move here but um yeah we'll see what they decide to come up with so very much on twitter your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and i'll see you next time